This is We the Sales Engineers Podcast, show 36. Welcome to We the SE's Podcast, the show for sales engineers by sales engineers with your host, Ramsey Majaba. Ramsey's favorite part of a night out is coming back home. Hello, SE Nation, and welcome back to another episode. I don't know if you've noticed, but over the last few weeks, my intros have been a little bit off because, uh, well, I've been sick for the last few weeks. At least I've had a very nasally voice or a very deep voice. But I'm getting better. It's uh, it's kind of a matter of fact in Canada that it just takes longer to recover because it's so cold. In any case, today I am actually publishing this on December 24th, which is obviously the day of Christmas Eve, so Merry Christmas everybody, and Happy Holidays to whoever doesn't celebrate Christmas, and if you're listening to this on that day, thank you for coming, thank you for listening, I wasn't expecting that, that's a bonus, I'm very happy that you're here, and you're sharing your Christmas with me. I don't have a guest today, I do have some guests recorded, but I didn't want to take too much of your time, so I decided to do a little bit of a shorter show this week and next week, just so that you guys don't spend a lot of time away from your families or friends or whoever you usually spend your time with. So for this week, I am choosing to talk about something that we don't generally talk about. Since we start, since I started the podcast, writing the blogs, which by the way, I write one every other week. So you should check them out. Uh, ever since I started doing that, I've been talking about how great this job is, the sales engineering job. And almost every guest that I get talks about how great it is. But nobody talks about like the cons other than my account manager is not great. So for this week, I, did, I do want to talk about the pros and cons of being a sales engineer because not many people talk about that. And this is all coming from my perspective. So other people can have their own perspective and... If you're a sales engineer and your perspective is different than mine, by all means, please come and share it on the comments section below. Like we we want, we need to have this conversation, and the more people who provide their input, the better it is for everybody else out there who is either confused about getting into the role or doesn't know what to expect. And a lot of times we take jobs without knowing what it actually entails, and it's a hit or miss if we enjoy it or not. Unless we're going from one role to the same role somewhere else. Let me start off with asking three questions that I'm going to answer a little bit later. So, can anybody become a sales engineer? Would everybody like it? and Or would everybody be good at it? And the, ans- the sam- simple answer is no to all of these. Like, okay, maybe everybody can become a sales engineer but not everybody's going to be good at it. It takes different kind of people to be good at it. And not everybody wants to be good at it. Some people enjoy something else. So a lot of people are prefer sitting behind a desk and coding, and that's what they do. That's what they enjoy. Or some people like getting calls and you know debugging situations uh, from like on a WebEx or whatever it is the case. And if that's what you enjoy, by all means, keep doing that. I will talk about the pros of why people would want to be SEs. I will talk about the cons of why people don't want to be SEs. So what are the pros of being a sales engineer? Well, there are seven the way I see them. Again, if you see differently, by all means, leave a comment and let me know. So number one, and this is in no particular order, you work with multiple types of people. So something that I do enjoy is actually debugging people, which means, and I know it sounds strange, but um, gentleman number A doesn't necessarily think the same way or act the same way or like being interacted the same way as gentleman number B, uh, number two. Did I say A and two? All right. Anyways, one and two. And then maybe uh, lady number three doesn't like to be interacted the same way as gentleman A, gentleman one, <laughs> or... Uh, gentlemen see I'm getting confused but the point is people are different and 
when we talk to people as sales engineers, we have to understand the different personality types, the different egos, how to treat them differently. Like something that I hate doing is sucking up to people, but if you treat them with respect, which is what you have to do with all people, people like being respected in different ways. So that's something that they have to learn. That's something that I enjoy. People might see that as con. If you do, then maybe sales engineering isn't for you. But I enjoy this part. And it's up to you. If you hang out with the same friends over and over and try to shy away from all everybody else, then this is going to be uncomfortable. Number two. We work on multiple projects, multiple customers at the same time. And some people do that like... Uh, I worked in network design. I worked on three different projects at the same time. That means three different customers. And that extended for our periods of months. As a support engineer, I worked with like maybe up to 10 tickets at the same time. These are different customers. But it went from like half a day to maybe a week. And then I moved on to the next uh, ticket that I need to work on. But as sales engineers, uh, the the pace is different. You're visiting customers. You're doing different demos for different products for different customers, possibly in the same week or in some cases the same day. So it's a challenge. But at least I'm never I'm never bored. When I worked in network design, uh, after the first couple of network designs that I did, it was fairly repetitive. And then when I moved on to another different type of network design where it was a large network, a lot of the network design involved just putting IP addresses on an Excel spreadsheet and then dragging and dropping to increment one by one, which meant, like, if you didn't understand what I'm trying to say, just understand that it was boring after a while. So with sales engineering, it is not boring. Number three, you work more, you sell more. You get paid more. And that's the big thing. In almost every engineering job that I know, there isn't overtime. So you work harder, you work more efficiently, doesn't matter. You're going to get paid where, what, what you're going to get paid. This is your salary at the end of the year. If the company does well and your boss likes you, might give you a bonus, might not. It's up to them. It's up to their discretion. But... As a sales engineer, the more you sell, the more you get paid. And maybe that's different in different companies, but most companies that I know, there is no cap to how much you get paid. So if you sell 150% over quota, you're going to get paid 150% of your commission. And this is this also comes from my experience of the fact that I worked in support. I also worked in network design. I you would have to work throughout the day, throughout the night to solve, to debug a hot issue. And although I had good managers, the best they could do for me, because they were tied to whatever system the company provides, is that they can tell me, hey, I'll take a morning off here or take an afternoon off there. The only thing where I get paid more was if I was on call, which meant if I carried a pager or a, what they called a pager, but it was actually a very old cell phone and received calls in the middle of the night to fix a problem customer outage and that happened once every uh, like six or to eight weeks so again as a sales engineer if there's a project that you're working on that you work harder on and work longer hours and with the help of your account manager you guys close the deal you get paid for that and that's not in any other job that I know Pro number four, SEs are usually very well paid. It's not a secret. A lot of SEs get paid very well because there, there is a shortage of SEs out there. For I don't know why. Like, I find it to be the best job ever, again, as I mentioned already. But 
almost every company doesn't have money to pay for to train an engineer, so they always want to hire a experienced engineer. So if somebody else wants to become a sales engineer, they're not going to hire anybody without any sales engineering experience. And obviously, there are exceptions to the rule. Everybody didn't. Nobody just was born a sales engineer. Everybody had to work for it and maybe go through multiple career changes to become a sales engineer. So it, it's it can happen, but it doesn't happen often enough, in my opinion. And also, this the skill mix for sales engineers is very different. So like we have to be able to be technical and also be able to talk to people. And I wrote a blog post that's coming out later this week, actually about the different skills and different skill combinations that SEs can have to be great SEs or to be good SEs. So because of that, generally SEs uh, demand a higher salary than other engineers. It could be comparable to directors' uh, salaries. And that's just speculation on my part, but from what I hear, that's the case. And according to Stephen Schaefer, uh, who he owns GRN Beachwood, and he was on show 16 of my podcast. So if you want to check it out, it's wethesalesengineers.com slash show 16. This is show 36, so the show notes will be at show 36. A uh, recruiting company specialized in finding clients may take a few months to actually find an SE that a company wants to hire. So because we're rare, because... Our, our skill set is different than any other S sales. Uh, sorry, any other engineer out there. We demand higher salaries. Supply and demand. I don't know why I said that, but yeah, it is supply and demand. There's a very high demand, very low supply. So I'm beating a dead horse. I'm moving on. So number five, you are in control of your time to an extent. So as a as a normal engineer, you clock in. Not that you physically clock in, but you get into work. You sit across from your manager or whoever it is, your teammates. You work from 9 to 5, and then you leave. And I've had, uh, it's happened to me where on a snowstorm in Ottawa, I said, hey, I'm working from home. And my manager got, well, he wasn't really happy. And he, we had a chat about it, and he was fine about it later. But there is that thing where, why aren't you in the office? So, But as a sales engineer, if there's a snowstorm, most of my customers aren't coming to work. I don't have to go to work. Also, if I need to go to the doctors, I just let my sales guy know, hey, I'm going to the doctors. And we work long hours anyway, so no one can actually say that you can't go to the doctor. And I'm having a very difficult time breathing right now so i hope you guys bear with me i'm doing i'm using the pause quite strategically on my recording so hopefully you guys are not listening to me just breathe into the microphone if you are i i do apologize you can set your own uh, meetings so you don't have to wait for somebody else to set them up for you you can set them up based on your time so in ottawa uh traffic usually dies uh, around 9 30 in the morning so i can leave at 9 30 not be stuck in traffic so most of my meetings are scheduled at 10 o'clock in the morning and i work from 8 to 9 or 8 to 9 30 at home about, uh, like on doing whatever it is that i need to do depending on what my calendar says that i should be doing that day but there are times that the account manager schedules meetings for you they schedule demos for you without checking with you so um, there are times that the customer will insist on a time that you provide a canned demo or whatever it is, but you are control and eighty percent of your your the, the time you're in control of your own calendar. And now, pro number six is you are proactive versus reactive in most cases. So everything that I'm saying here is in most cases, depending on the type of engineer or sales engineer you are but because you're a sales engineer and your job is to sell you actually have the chance to not you don't really need to sit around and wait for someone to give you work if you don't have something to do which is rare you can actually go visit your own customers like call them up say hey i'm in town you want to have a coffee or 
whatever it is that you do and get some more information like that <laughs> go visit them. if you have a badge to actually access the building that's amazing you can do that do that as much as possible because the more you do that the more they see you uh what is it they say out of mind out of uh, out of sight out of mind so insight in mind i guess is the, is the opposite so be in sight and this is how i've become friends with a lot of my customers where like we go out for coffee we although sometimes we talk about business a lot of times we're just talking about families or basketball or skiing like i don't do skiing or skating which is usually a short conversation but you get the gist and th when you do that some a lot of times you end up getting more information about opportunities budgets so it's a win-win you make a friend and you get information and they know you're there to support them so it's a win for you win for them why not and number seven is travel so pro number seven travel and i have to admit i do not see that as a pro personally but i know a lot of people do enjoy travel so i put it as a pro and because you're a sales engineer and depending on your company and their like uh, expense policies, you may be able to eat in like fancy restaurants, visit nice places. I do not travel much. I don't. So here's the thing with me. When I don't travel for an extended period of time, I start thinking to myself, I miss traveling. And then I do travel and then I remember why I hate it. So I would do it if I have to, but it's not something I enjoy, so that's as much as I'm gonna talk about it as a pro. And now it's time for the cons. Now, I do wanna warn you, there are a little bit more cons than there are pros, but um, I think the, it's quality over quantity, so I was able to think of more cons, but keep in mind, this is also tied to what you guys do with it. So, for example, let's start with, uh, well, I want let's, let's start from the bottom of the list you are reactive so which is kind of the contrary to what i set up up when the with the pros is that you're proactive but um, the, that really depends on you so a lot of my i've seen colleagues who do not set their own schedule which means they are waiting for work and because they're waiting for work their work ends up being filled up for them by other people which means customers call them up account managers call them up colleagues call them up everybody so everybody calls them up so instead of them setting their own time saying hey i can't see you at this time but i can see you here they end up being very reactive and the thing about it is that's what they enjoy so i'm not critiquing them in any way that's how they enjoy doing it and they've been successful that's how they've built relationship as being helpful as ease. So it worked for them. But that's just an example. What I'm trying to say here is it's in my eyes it's a it's a con, but it can easily be changed. You can easily change your attitude from being reactive to proactive, so it's up to you. Right. So that was actually con number what was it? Five? So let's go back to con number one. At least that's how I wrote them in my list. So it may not make sense to you what I'm saying right now, but that's my uh, organized chaos and I like it. So number one is you are tied to account managers who can actually tell you what to do. It doesn't matter if they're good or bad. So I'm lucky that I'm only tied to one account manager most of the time. So if my previous account manager was okay, but he wasn't very technical, so I had to pull a lot of weight, which meant I was doing a little bit more than what my job description meant, but I didn't mind that. I actually enjoyed that part of it. And we worked well together as a team, which meant we made our quota more often than not. But in some, in some companies, you might be tied to more account managers. I've heard one example of one gentleman being tied to nine account managers 
So it it, it gets tough because everybody's pulling you in different directions. That when I talked about being proactive versus reactive, it's kind of hard to do it when you have nine guys telling you your time. But if you want to hear a solution to that, uh, check out show my show with Brian Mazafari. I'll put the link in the show notes so that you guys can hear it if you want to. Con number two is um, you might have to talk to people you don't like. So as sales engineers, we're dealing with customers or account managers. Some some account managers you may not like, some product managers you may not like, some you might love, some customers, believe it or not, you might not like. So you're going to have to deal with them and... Uh, you're going to have to work with them whether you like it or not, unfortunately. Um, a lot of people talk about the aspect of firing customers, but it, that only works if you're like 180% over quota and you don't care what, about this specific customer, although your company does. So just something to note. And if you are charismatic enough, if you're nice enough, even to the people you don't like, they'll end up liking you anyways. You don't have to be friends with every single person you work with or any every single customer. Some you will make friends with and some you will just have a mutual respect and leave it at that. It's uh, pretty much the account manager's job to make everybody fall in love with them or at least to buy from them. Con number three is that, generally speaking, sales engineers work longer hours, especially if you don't know how to manage your time. And this is, comes back to like being reactive and not like not setting your own schedule, having somebody else set it for you, not being brave enough to talk to your account manager when they set up a demo for the next day, and then you have to go work overnight to get it done because in the end you're the one who's standing there and gonna be embarrassed if you don't do it right. I, this has happened to me where I had to, I've had to push back on my account manager that like there's no way I'm gonna be able to do it tomorrow. And a colleague of mine, that happened to him often in the end, he talked to his account manager. He says, do you want to do a demo or do you want to close the deal? Because if you want to close the deal, you're going to have to give me more time. If you just want to do a demo, I can do it. And that fixed the situation. So just be aware that you're going to have to talk to your account manager and a lot of times you're going to have to guide them. The same way you're going to have to get guidance from them as well. If you're doing something incorrectly, like... We bash a lot of uh, we bash a lot of account managers, but a lot of them are actually pretty good. And <clears throat> just to be clear, SEs are not God's gift to mankind. Although I think it is the best job, the best quality an SE could have is being coachable. Well, there are many good qualities, but one of them is being coachable. So take feedback. And I just want to be clear that I say that before everybody thinks that I hate account managers and I never listen to them. Just the point is um, manage your time. I wrote a blog post, which I released last week at some point, which is all about time and ma- uh, time management and task organization. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, just read that. I'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. Four, uh, reactive. I already mentioned that. Six is travel, which I also mentioned in the pros. I, oh, sorry. Five is travel. I already mentioned that in the pros. But for me, um, travel has never been a good thing. It's been something that I've done uh, just for work, but I've never actually enjoyed it. Although I did I did have two goals when I was traveling. One, visit every cheesecake factory I can find uh, in every in this whatever state that I go to. And two, visit, uh, what was it, Lifetime Fitness? I think that's what it's called in every state that I go to. So at least I had an objective when I traveled. I can't even keep uh, keep track of which number of uh, con I'm at, but the next con is face rejection. So we lose deals. It happens. I hate it when it happens. Um, well, I hate losing a game of uh, escape manner. I just went to an escape manner with my colleagues we, I think we need an extra 10 minutes. We lost. I hated it. I just, but that's just me. I might be weird. But 
uh, you're going to lose deals. And you could have done an amazing job with everything. It's just not in your control. You could have done an amazing qualification, demo, uh, doing a POC. You could have done everything right. In the end, for reasons that we don't know, we could lose the deal. It could be that the like the company, the cust- potential customer, just brought us in to piss off their in- the incumbent, the our competition that already are entrenched in there, just to for a price check, and and that's something that the account manager should have discovered but didn't, or it could be that they just ran out of money and they already have what they have. There, there's a lot of reasons why you could lose the, lose the deal even if you did an amazing job. So we're going to face rejections as SEs. The next con is, as journalist SEs, we're going to be jack of all trades, master of none, and as specialist SEs, we're going to be pigeonholed into one technology. So this is a two-for-one con, but as journalist, you're going to have a broad spectrum of products, broad spectrum of technologies that we're going to have to understand. So we're never going to be experts in anything. Again, that is dependent on you and what you do because you could actually take year one, I want to focus on this technology. Year two, I'm going to focus on that technology. And now you know two technologies. So you can build upon your own knowledge. And as a specialist SE, your focus is one technology, but if you feel like you're being pigeonholed there, you can always, like, after work, I guess, uh, work on something else. Because if uh, your company is paying you to be a specialist SE, you're going to have to be a specialist SE and not waste time doing other technologies. So that is a real con there, which you might have to do it, like, from during family time or something. And... These are like the cons that I can think of. Um, and there probably are more. Actually, I have written down more, but I'm um, looking at them now. It just like I have then jump into the deep end, and that depends on your company. Uh, so, which basically means that a lot of companies don't actually provide training; they just throw you in there and like sink or swim. You have to get out of it. I don't even know if this is con number 10 at this point. I'm just so confused. It is 10 o'clock at night. and uh, I can't keep count. Anyways, so that's one. And the next one, or the last one, would be if you've been there in the company long enough, it'll be same old, same old at some point. And I think that goes for every job. It's not really... Specific to to sales engineering. If you've been in a job long enough, you're going to see almost everything. Um, the technology might change, but the demo will remain the same. We'll just choose a different technology to do the same thing. So these are my cons. And the reason I'm hurrying up right now is because I wanted to keep this as short as possible for Christmas Eve, for the day of Christmas Eve, I didn't want you to spend a lot of time with me, although I'm happy you're here, but I did not want to go over the 30 minute mark, and we're at 28 minutes right now, that's without the intro, uh, my wife's intro, so <clears throat> that's pretty much it for me, if you agree or disagree, because again, everybody has their own reality, their own truth, please share it in the comments, let me know what you think. If you think I'm way off, let me know what you think. I'll be the happy to hear it and learn from you guys as well, as well. So Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Actually, I'll see you on the New Year's as well with another solo solo episode. And with that, this is Ramsey signing off. <laughs>